Hey guys, welcome back to my sewing room. My name is Amanda. If you haven't been here before, if you have, welcome back. It's been a while. I'm in my new sewing space and today I'm going to show you guys how I made a Tiana inspired Sweet 16 dress. I cut this video into two parts though. So there's going to be the part where I make the corset and then the second part with all the skirt and stuff. So today's video is going to be making of the corset. I'll show you guys how I made the pattern as well as how I constructed the whole corset. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Now let's get to it. Okay, so I'm going to start with my pattern lab pattern. I plug in all of my clients' measurements and then it uh, it creates a block pattern for me. I print it out, tape it together, and then I'm just going to go ahead and start manipulating this pattern. So I'm going to start by connecting our dart points up to our apex, and then I'm also going to draw in our waistline for reference. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the shape for our sweetheart neckline. I came down about five eighths of an inch below our bust line and then about two and a half to two and a quarter inches above our apex point at our princess seam. And I'm just going to go ahead and connect those together. I like to kind of freehand this here. You can see the photo that I'm kind of referencing as far as the shape of the neckline goes. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw this in perfecting the neckline with my various rulers that I have. I decided to drop the armhole slightly a little bit. Um, so then I just went and uh, redrew that as well as mark out my seam allowance here because the majority of my pattern has seam allowance. So I want to make sure that I'm always marking out my seam allowance. Now I'm going to go ahead and split up this dart here. We have our main dart, which is about two inches wide. I believe I shortened it. I'm sorry, I narrowed it. And then I'm going to go ahead and also create another dart because what I'm doing is I want to have some waist reduction with our corset. So I narrowed this dart and then added it to uh, the amount that I wanted to have our other dart. Our other dart starts halfway between our first dart and our side seam. And then I'm just going to go ahead and create this dart, which was about an inch and a quarter. So uh, it just depends on how much waist reduction that you want. You can kind of see my math here that I did. So I need an inch and three quarter uh, waist reduction on my front pieces. And then I need an inch and a quarter um, waist reduction on my back. So I'm just splitting that in between the darts. You can organize this however you want to. And then I'm also going to connect that to the midpoint at our armhole and then back down to uh, at the same level as our uh, dart point at, at the bottom there. Now I'm going to take a little bit of a uh, reduction from the bottom of the corset, just so that our corset lays nice and flat against the body and it isn't uh, kind of gaping outwards. I'm going to go ahead and retrace, uh, sorry, retrace out uh, my back pieces. And then I also decided to narrow the front and this is kind of what it looks like. I don't know where the, the clips went for the back. Right. So I figured I'd come on here and talk for a little bit. I, I just finished drafting the pattern. Uh, I think I showed like a montage of drafting the pattern probably, but now I decided to go ahead and start <laughs> to dye the fabric. Um, I need like a specific shade of um, green, almost like a mint, a little bit darker than mint. Um, and I also needed to ombre down to yellow on some portions of the dress. So I decided to just buy white fabric and go ahead and dye it myself. Um, we'll see if I regret that decision, but I have two fabrics that I'm thinking about using. And one of them I already had in stock. I have this beautiful, it's like a silk taffeta, I believe. Um, and it's like a cream color. And then I have some white matte satin, which is a polyester. I'm heating up water to dye the fabric. Um, I'm going to dye both of these to see which one creates the better color. And then I'm going to um, cut out those pieces, rough cut them, dye them, let them dry, and then finally cut out my pieces so I can start assembling the corset. I'm going to underline whichever one I choose with a cotton duck fabric. Super thick, perfect for this corset that has waist reduction. So so I decided to use the silk taffeta. I thought that it would be really nice. It was a shame that I didn't have enough to do the skirt, but I thought doing the bodice and it would be great. So what I did was I pinned down um, all of my pattern pieces and then I just rough cut them out 
not in, in any shape or form, just rough cut them out so that I can dye them. I have a gumbo pot here that I filled with water and I brought it to almost a boil, but not quite. And then I dumped half the bottle of dye in here. I am trying to get a pastel green, so I don't want it to be super, super dyed. And then I put my sample piece in there just so I can see how long that I need to dye it until I get the proper color. So I decided to dye it for about a minute and 25 seconds and that gave me the perfect pastel mint color green. And this is how I dyed all of my pieces for the bodice. This is what they look like when they're all dried. I dyed two uh, like sets, two sets for each because I'm using the same fabric for the lining. This is what the silk looked like before and then what it looks like when it's dyed. Now I am going to cut out my pattern pieces exactly from my cotton duck fabric. And this is what I'm gonna to use to underline my uh, silk taffeta. So I actually didn't even um, have perfect seam allowance for this either. I just laid my pattern piece out and drew out the, the um, seam line. So I obviously I did two of each and now I'm gonna go ahead and underline our silk taffeta here. I'm placing some pins down the center and then I'm going to kind of roll the fabric back towards itself so that I can almost roll pin it. I think that's what the technique is called. And I'm gonna base right on that stitching line. So what this does is it creates a little bit of excess fabric on the outer layer so that it can get around the body and be smooth. So when this is actually on the wearer, it will be smooth even though when it's laid flat, it looks like it puckers. So I'm gonna do that for all of my pattern pieces. And it took me, I think it took me about three hours to do this. You can also mark out the, um, your waistline as well for reference. And this is what they all look like once they are basted together. And then I, after I baste them together, then I made sure that our seam allowance was perfected. Now it's time to assemble all of our bodice pieces. Look at them, they look so good. I'm gonna start with our center front and our side front pieces. I actually did make sure that I, um, pinned like perfectly on the line on both sides because my seam allowance isn't evenly a half an inch. It kind of just is what my eyeball said it was. So I made sure I pinned right on the, se the seam line and I'm gonna go ahead and stitch these all together. Let me see. Yeah. It went what? ding, didn't it? It's not ding. I made sure to clip into all of my seam allowances that were on kind of curves and I'm giving that a really nice steam press. Be careful with the steam if you're working with silk. If you're not, go go for it. This is what it looks like. It looks so clean. I still have most of my basting in here and I also dyed some lace. Uh, the same color green. It kind of didn't come out the same color but I dyed it green because I wanted to see um, pretty much how what color I wanted to use and I sent that to my client. While I'm waiting for her to reply though, I'm gonna go ahead and hand stitch all of my bony channels onto the um, the face layer. So onto the outer layer. Um, remember it's underlined with a cotton duck so um, none of the stitches show through and I stitched my boning on my center front and all of my seams. Now I decided to use, well I got the confirmation back from my client and we decided to go with the white lace. So I'm using my wood burner tool here to cut out my lace and then I am stitching it while well, I'm pinning it to the bodice and then I'm going to go ahead and hand stitch all of this on. I'm hand stitching everything on. I'm also um, putting silver seed beads as well as the elongated kind of cylinder beads and rhinestones all on the bodice.
and then it was time to sew our side seams together. I am adding piping to this, so if you did want this to be more alterable, you could pipe both uh, the front and the back separately and then sew the side seams later. But since this is a custom piece that should not need any alterations, I decided to go ahead and finish off my um, side seams as well as all of the lace here um, at the back of the bodice as well. Now I'm creating my piping. I have some strips cut on the bias of my silk fabric and I also have some piping cord that I'm putting uh, in between the layers and I'm using my zipper foot to get right up next to, the, next to the piping. I created a lot of piping for this project. Also going to use bias strips to sew my loops for our corset back. So if you guys are familiar with how I sew my loops, I start off with like a cone shape and then I narrow it down to about a quarter inch seam allowance and then turn it the right way out. Now I am uh, piping our off the shoulder sleeves. I'm using organza here as our base. This organza is dyed the light uh, pastel green, the same as the rest of it. And I am piping the top and the bottom here. And then I'm gonna use another piece of organza dyed the same color, and I'm going to um, add it to the top and turn it the right way out. I'm also gonna add the same lace that we used for the bodice. I'm gonna add that to our off the shoulder sleeves. What I did was I pinned it kind of where I liked the pattern and then I roughly cut around it. And then I used my wood burner tool to make sure that my edges were nice and clean. Um, and then I hand sewed all of this lace on, or I may have machine sewed it, I can't remember, but nonetheless, it was sewed on. I'm now putting our sleeves right sides together with the bodice and I'm gonna sew on both sides to the front and the back, making sure to start a half an inch from the top of the neckline of the dress because remember we still have our seam allowance at the top of the dress where, uh, versus the sleeve that is completely finished off. Now I am adding our loops. I have, I think a total of 18 loops, so nine on each side. I spaced them about an inch apart and I am sewing them seam side up towards the, the sort towards the side seam. <laughs> if I can get that out, towards the side seam. And I am making sure that I'm using my pin to keep them more like sisters than cousins.
Now I'm adding my pipe, my piping to the top neckline around the armhole and down the back as well as the bottom um, edge as well. And I decided to take this time to finish up adding all of my boning channels in here. I'm gonna use quarter inch plastic boning for this corset. You could use steel boning, uh, but I didn't have any on hand. I have plenty of plastic boning, so that's what I decided to use. I also decided to put a waist stay in this. The reason why I'm putting a waist stay is because I reduced the waist by almost four inches here. We are so close to being done. I have my lining here. I sewed all of the seams the same way as normal. And what I'm doing is I am um, kind of stay stitching around the top and the bottom edges. It, it's supposed to be about a half an inch, but some of my pieces didn't line up here because my seam allowance wasn't all the way. So I'm kind of just blending them all together. And then I am going to hand sew it into our bodice. So instead of bagging it out, I decided to hand sew everything.
I'm placing our lining right sides together with our outer bodice and I'm going to machine the, um, the back, the center back with the loops. I'm gonna machine the lining to that. Then I am making sure that I am folding down by our seam allowance the top and bottom edge so that when we flip it to the inside, that is already nice and finished off. And all we, we have to do is pin all the way around the top of the bottom and do a felling stitch to secure the lining to the outer layer. This is what our completed bodice looks like. I'm so proud of myself. I've always wanted to tackle historical projects like this, but I've never um, actually done it. So I'm so glad that I can do this, especially for my client. This is what it looks like worn. She still hasn't had her party yet, so I don't have official pictures. If you guys follow me on Instagram, um, you guys will see the official pictures on there. Thank you guys so much for watching. The skirt video will be out next week, and I'll see you guys in that one.